and umbrellas are going up again and waterproofs are going on and the teams think oh no and that is a horrible track surface yeah, now you can see there's wet on the track because as they're driving over it they're moving the wet and these guys are on slicks we could be heading for a very traumatic first lap here but those who have taken the inspired choice to go in the pits and there goes one of the bmws i think that could be and it was adam morgan, adam morgan. who has come in in fact adam morgan then in the pit lane and basically I was driving around, I was getting no temperature in at all, and in my head I'm thinking, I'm just going to crash. <laughs> I'm just going to crash at turn one, or I'm going to crash at old hairpin, so I'm going to put wets on. I came in, put the wets on, and then prayed for rain. Hopefully that was the right call. Yeah. It's not often you hope for rain, is it? No. Yeah, well, here we are at uh, Changeable Donington Park for the first race of the season and, yeah, calm before the storm. I'm feeling totally relaxed, fine um, at the minute. I can imagine that will probably ramp up slightly, but my main emotion is uh, excitement. I'm just really, really looking forward to getting going. Back in the sprint racing format of things, you know, I've been on the endurance side of the, of the sports car world recently, so that racing's amazing, but, you know, it's not the British touring cars, so. Uh, really, really looking forward to getting back involved and also um, figuring out where we are. You know, I have no idea um, whereabouts in the pack we're gonna we're gonna feed out. So, really looking forward to getting a good read on that and then um, being able to to progress from there. Bit of nervousness, lots of excitement. For some reason, this seems to be the longest off season I've ever had. So, I've had lots and lots of time to think about this weekend which I think has added to maybe a bit more pressure on myself, being with a new team, a new environment. Things have changed a bit, it's a different, different place for me. So yeah, it's a bit more, bit more nervous, but I'm, I'm, at the same time, I'm absolutely buzzing and can't ready to, you know, ready to get going. For this year, we need to adopt a bit more of a structured approach. You know, last year was really bitty for me. We didn't have the car underneath us, I felt that we had in 2021. So new car, new team, things look really positive. So really, it's just about having a good weekend, putting points on the board and looking for a structured season, you know. You know, in touring car racing now, modern touring car, the time is so close, you know, from pole to P10 can be two tenths. So you're only looking for small amounts. So that's where we focus all our energy. So you really need to look at those details. So perhaps in previous years, I, we haven't, and I haven't gone to those depths in myself as well. There's obviously more time in the driver, nine times out of 10 than there is in the car. Once you've got the car to its, its, its finite point, then you've got to find the rest in yourself. So you need to be able to really look into those fine details. I guarantee you in qualifying in the dry, the top 10, 15, 20 cars will be separated by a few tenths. It's, it's going to be tough. You know, you need the stars to align, you need things to fall into place. You know, my expectations are high. I always put a lot of pressure on myself. I'm, I'm here to win, I'm not here to make up numbers. And I have got every, every possible reason to perform. You know, I'm in the best team, I'm in the best car, I've got the best teammates. So there's no reason why I can't be at the front. And that is exactly what I'm pushing to do this year. session of the season. Morgan goes second, Jelly goes second, Hill is on the hybrid behind them, so it's BMW is very much to the four, the top four at the moment. Reference 68.6, 68.4. Fastest lap we've seen so far this weekend, a one minute 7.7 for Dan Robottom. This was a P1. Oh, Watson, Watson got up to eighth on that last lap. Wow. Oh, fantastic job. Andrew Watson, eighth, he's becoming the hero of the session in a way. Yeah, fantastic performance. Hey, late nights, early mornings pays off now at eight, doesn't it? Andrew Watson, a brilliant eighth uh, on his debut, but this is just to get in the top ten, remember, that the positions then will be reset. Okay, obviously, just to keep in mind, 
is we've got one bite of the cherry here. Fair enough. The worst we can do is ten. But we should be in the top four easy. So, it doesn't really matter what you did in Q1 other than getting into the second element. Forget the lap time, they're there for interest, but it's the lap time that you do within these 10 minutes that counts for the grid position. Sutton goes quickest, Ash Sutton on to pole position, 67.486, so uh, Ash Sutton for Napa Racing, seven pole positions to his name. Could this be an eighth? Not if the likes of Dan Robottom for example, have anything to say about it. I mentioned Robotter because he's yet to do a lap time, so has Andrew Watson. What can they do to shuffle the order? Let's see. Turkington goes through, and that is up to sixth. Dan Kamish goes second on a 67.927, and Ash Sutton's had a lap time disallowed. Ash Sutton's lap time is disallowed, and that means he's back down the orders of seventh. So it's Hill, Kamish, Ingram, Cook, Turkington, Morgan, Watson. Robottom has just done his start-up lap of a 1 minute 10. Watson's done a 69.2. There's more to come from both of them. Dan Robottom, absolute best sector one. He's on the hybrid now, coming out of coppice, down towards the chicane. He's done an absolute best in sector one. He's done an absolute best in sector two then. And this ought to put him up towards the top. He's going to have it. He's going to do it. He's going to have it, isn't he? Josh Cook goes through, Dan Robottom's got to beat a 67.843 and he's done it, he goes through 67.598, Robo goes quickest of all. Dan Robottom will be absolutely delighted, what better way to start your relationship with a new team, the pole position. Come on! Rare moment of inspiration. Great way to start the year. The car was mega, the team was mega, so we just, just put the lap in. You know, there was a bit more time in it. I think Ash had a, a lap taken for track limits. That might have been a saving grace for pole position, but ultimately the pair of us were, were, were quick. Um, and that's a result of, you know, hard work. I think that, you know, I think that we, we deserve as much as anyone to be in the championship, and I think we can, can fight at the front. We obviously didn't have the package last year, but we've got it now, so let's see. You know, in terms of expectation for tomorrow, we need to try and turn pole into a win. But Ash will be fired up, so um, it'll be an interesting day. It'll be good. Yeah, so first qualifying of the year done over the moon, to be honest. Uh, me at the top ten shootout, you know, amongst you know all the season regulars and and some real experience there. So that was um, probably more than I expected. So just delighted to get in there and finish ninth, you know, on the grid, and you know you're in you're in the mix there. So. Well, all the feedback was that if you're in the top 10, things are a lot more predictable. So I'm just happy there. You know, it might be an easier, might be an easier um, first couple of races for me, but never say never in touring cars. I hope I'm not looking back on this in February and thinking, hey, you had no idea what you're in for. Everything looked right. It's a bit hot oil. Ah, don't worry about that. Ah, no. Don't need that. Yeah, we do. No, you don't. <laughs> First outing in a touring car went well, so that's all we can hope for. If this is the start of it, let's keep going. So this weekend, I just want to enjoy myself. I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. There's a lot to learn, different formats. Obviously, the Jack Sears Trophy is a is a season long ambition. So my goals for for this season, number one is is to win the Jack Sears uh, Trophy in the Rookie Championship. It's not going to be a, an easy challenge by any means, but gives us a real clear objective. So the Jack Sears Trophy is for all rookies in the touring car field, but also people that have never scored a podium, an outright podium, obviously the rookies who have never raced before, so will automatically be eligible for the Jack Sears Trophy. It's a completely separate championship away from the drivers and the teams and the independents. It is a separate trophy again, and it just gives a little bit more of an incentive for the drivers who have never finished on the podium to do so. I think the, the whole format of three races in one day, the following, the excitement around the championship, the access that the fans have, the opportunity it prevents for sponsors and, and everybody around the paddock is just amazing. So having that combination of front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, different levels of experience, got the reverse grid, different compounds of tires, we've got the hybrid system now. So. Yeah, it's very different to what I've done before. Morning. Good girl. So who is this? This is Ayla. She's two and a bit. Aren't you? I guess. Yeah. How old are you? 
to in a bit. So yeah, so that's what we do in the morning, have a coffee, sit and chill, don't we? And then think about the day ahead. It's just apprehension now, isn't it? This is the worst part of the day, is waiting for race one. Because you obviously run through different scenarios in your head. It's a great day for us, for Napa Racing UK, because obviously you've got myself and Ash on the front row. Dan Cam's only a couple of rows behind in P5, so there's a really good opportunity here to get three cars on the podium, which would be amazing. Um, what you know, what a great way to start the season. So, but there's a few scenarios that are going to happen to make that happen. So, and obviously we can't afford to trip over each other. Um, we've all had a chat. We all know what the plan is, but whether it will happen, you know, we've got those two pesky BMWs sat just behind us. They'll be quick. They always are. Obviously, it goes without saying it's round one, so the championship isn't going to be won today. There's no point in damaging another's race if you you know just to hang on to a place um, and then maybe compromising the team. So you just got to be sensible about it, you know, we'll be what it'll be. You need points, don't you, in this championship? So to have a good first weekend will just set us on the board nicely. Um, you know, it's a nice feeling to take the first pole of the year. You know, I, you know, Ash and I have both looked at the data and to be honest, we both left a couple of tents on the table. So that's really confidence inspiring for me because, you know, as a yardstick, you haven't got really anyone better on the circuit than Ash Sutton. So to, to look through the data and go, well, he gave two tenths there and I gave two tenths here. What a better place to, 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 to judge yourself from. So, um, yeah, we need a good weekend, points on the board and then look forward. But it's a long year, isn't it? Everyone's going to have a bad weekend, including ourselves. So we've just got to get points while they're there and then capitalise the best. You know, the, the, you win championships by making your bad days the best they can be. You know, um, you know, you can't win everything. So when we have a bad weekend, we just need to get as many points as possible. But, you know, we've got the opportunity for a good one here. So, again, points mean prizes. Don't think about it too much. But just in much experience on the thing, we've got the, 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 the slicks with increased pressures. They're the ones that are a little bit more scrubbed as well. I did, I've used the ones that are a little bit more scrubbed rather than the ones that are almost brand new. So they'll be fine. Engine for hybrid two. Because you've got a red switch and a blue switch. Would that work? All of this is about routine. As long as you follow the routine, you can't use your, your brains on the on the things that aren't part of the routine, so you've got more cognitive ability. Perhaps I oversimplify it, I don't know. We'll find out soon, won't we? Okay, a couple of checklists. One is uh, Rimba uh, Hybrid 2, at 2, uh, in the wet. Your hour on wet tyres, new wets. Uh, reminder then on brake balance, please. So the green flag is shown and this final formation lap is underway. In the end of this, they'll re-grid and we will go racing. And the man on pole position is Dan Rowbottom, a third career pole in the Napa Racing UK with Cataclean for focus as he heads down towards Redgate. Lots of Napa guests here to cheer him on. And it is an all Ford front of the grid then. Uh, mate, everybody's in the same boat now. I'm pretty sure everybody's on wet. So just going to do what we need to do. Strap yourself into the world's fastest straight jacket. This is going to be quite some race. I would have thought on a greasy track surface. Reputations to be made or broken, perhaps even early on in the season. It is round one of the Quick Fits British Touring Car Championship. It is 18 laps. It is go and a great start by Ash Sutton, who gets the jump on Dan Robotter. But Jake Hill comes between the two. There's contact. Sutton gets all sideways. He's on the grass. He's having a big, big moment. Jake Hill takes over the race lead. Turkington to the outside of everybody to try to find extra traction. Sutton has dropped like a stone. Robot and Fluff the start and got bogged down. He's in third as they drop down the hill, but it's BMWs up front. Hey, for a mate, we saw it on screen. Ash Sutton is down the pit lane. Sutton is in the pits. This is his view. There was smoke coming out of the back of the car. It might be damaged. It might be that he's got everything clogged up with grass as well and it's overheated. Hopefully he'll be able to get back out, but it may be terminal. Safety, safety car will be in this lap. Close the gap. Safety car in this lap. Let's get ready. So Jake Hill leads. Dan Camp by 0.495 of a second. Tom Ingram, the reigning champion, is third. Robottom is fourth. Ricky Collard is fifth, but he's got Adam Morgan on one side. He's got Josh Cook on the other. That's Josh Cook going straight on at the end of the pit straight and way off into the gravel. 
It's going to be one of those races. If you survive, you're going to finish pretty well, aren't you? And the top three breaking away now. Robottom is the best of the rest. He needs to be lapping quicker than those ahead, obviously. And he's not there yet, but he is getting away from Collard, and that is Nick Halstead is in the gravel. And I rather fear that's going to be another interruption. Safety car. Safety car, safety car, safety car. race the Lords. Safety car, safety car. So we start now. Lap eight of 21. That is the new distance. Three tenths of a second was the margin, but Robottom doesn't stay with Ingram. Look, the top three just edge away ever so slightly. For fifth place, though, Collard versus Watson. Andrew Watson is an absolute man inspired. Go, 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 go. This is some touring car debut, bearing in mind he's never raced a front-wheel drive car before. Yeah, he's been the revelation. Of, for me, he was a revelation of qualifying to get that car up into the top ten. Watson is, through. Watson is through indeed, he's ahead of Collard and now Morgan comes up to have a go. Climb up towards McLean's, Ingram third. And again, look, Robottom is almost there, but if anything, he's being caught by Andrew Watson. Star drive of the race, Andrew Watson is fifth and closing for fourth place at the Vauxhall. Get chasing, sir, get chasing. Everyone's been saying how difficult touring cars is. He's up there in the top five in the league group. I bet he can't believe it. I bet the Parmax team can't believe it. They have found a little star in Andrew Watson. Battle on for the lead. Battle on for fourth. Robottom versus Watson. Credit to Jake Hill, though, for hanging on in there. There's Watson, still fifth, but he's getting closer and closer to Robottom all the time. There they are. Watson behind, Watson behind. He's alongside Robottom now, who tried to defend, but Watson has lined up, looked for the inside line down to the chicane. Fourth place is his. What? Uh, Watson kid, he's pretty good to be honest, I'm impressed. Andrew Watson's last lap was a 16.7, he's lapping quicker than the three ahead of him. Yeah, nearly half a second faster as well, so he is going to close that gap down very quickly. Kamish wide into Redgate, wants the undercut and goes for it now. Can he get run up alongside the BMW? Oh, so close. This is Kamish's best chance of the race lead. He's got the inside at Hollywood. He's going to be on the outside for the first part of the craters. Then the inside line for the old hairpin and Dan Kamish will go for it. <laughs> So Ingram is the next one to monitor, but look at Watson looking for a way past him for third. He goes wide at Coppice. Go on. And he's got some traction on the outside line, or has he? he gets run wide a little bit. Ah, oh, <laughs> Has to back out of it. Yeah, welcome to touring cars, yeah, Andrew. This is how we race at the front. We <laughs> run you wide. Jake goes defensive. Ingram is boxed in behind him. Now, where's Watson? He's right there on the back. Look, he has not given up for a podium, has he? In the box, or he goes to the outside at Hollywood. And even though Ingram is on the hybrid, look at the way that Watson tries to stay level, couldn't do it. Kamish turns right, turns left, check and flag awaits. Round one of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship is a 10th career win for Dan Kamish, who comes across the line, but look at second, Ingram and Jake Hill. It's a virtual dead heat between the two of them as they come across the line. Jake Hill given the nod by 93 thousandths of a second. Andrew Watson fourth, great debut. Dan Robottom fifth, Ricky Collard sixth. Next charge to the line. That's the flag, that's flag P5 there, P5. Back four, cool down, please. <laughs> and make the most of it. So Dan Kamish wins the first round of the championship, gets the fastest lap, leads the lap, so gets the four. Oh, that was nerve wracking. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> that's a very tense race, that. That was. <laughs> it looked tricky. Yeah. yeah. I'll take it. So I will. But that, Jake wasn't exactly, I mean, he made the good start, but he looked like he was struggling a bit as well, so. Yeah. Yeah, it was obviously tricky condition. I don't think we had the fantastic setup. And, and Adam really struggled there, especially like corner exits of the slow corners. So, yeah, he, 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 he did the best he could, really. So it's, for the first race of the year, P7 is, is, is okay. It's a, it's a few points, so. Uh, but yeah, we need to do some work for race two. Welcome to Touring Car. <laughs> Hello mate, hard luck. Which one of my mates fired me off? It was all a bit funky. Just took the tyre out early. Yeah. And everybody, you can see people coming down to your level, yeah. it was eight laps later. He's done f***ing good. And somebody who's only sat in that car oh, for three yeah, test yeah. days, there's a lot of natural talent there, I think. Definitely, definitely. That'd be good. Yeah, what a race. Uh, Sergeant P9 made some changes to the car overnight and it just was absolutely perfect. I think I was probably the quickest car on track. 
just picking my way through and oh my god I had so much fun I haven't had that much fun in a race in a long time so I am glad to be in the British Touring Car Championship that's for sure so yeah just shocked relieved delighted everything so um, unbelievable to get independent on Jack Sears win and um, for all the guys and girls of the team you know it's it's incredible and um, yeah we're ready to get stuck in later on now. Yeah so this morning I was just trying to stay as calm as possible I do like the wet I, I grew up rallying and racing quads and loose conditions so I've always liked the wet we know the car is good in the wet anyway so quietly confident but I was never expecting a P4 so I had a sniff at the overall podium but I, I used up all my hybrid which rookie mistake so yeah when I got to Tom I didn't have any left so if I had uh, we could have been the podium overall but to be P4 on debut is just just incredible unfortunately now we have to set our sights on the overall podium so yeah starting P4 on this one Let's see what happens. Hopefully, it, you know, get a bit more rain because slightly different story in the dry, I think. But yeah, let's hope it stays changeable and, you know, we can stay in the mix. Who knows later on, reverse grid, but keeping our noses clean and bagging points today. So, uh, we will be having a podium, um, but it's uh, not for the first of all. So uh, there's a weather front coming in, we don't really know when it's going to hit and how intense it's going to be. So it's going to be a case of quick hope for the best. We're going to go to the grid on slicks and Dan will make a call as to what he wants on the car for the race. The, the challenging conditions, the changeable weather, part of me kind of enjoys that. You've got to make a decision, it's got to be wet, it's got to be slicks. It's quite, for me, black and white. I kind of like that aspect of it in, in maybe a weird way. You grumble and you get stressed, but you have to make a decision. You have to make it X minutes before you know, the, the wheels need to be on the car and, and you have to commit. You've got to come in. You've either got to come in and be the first person on wets and commit, or you've got to be the last man standing on slicks. And it's a juggling act. Race two of the 2023 Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship is assembling on the grid. Dan Kamish, our first race winner on pole position, but alongside the defending champion, Tom Ingram. It's going to be fascinating. For the, for the documentary? <laughs> Bryony, do you want to say anything for the documentary? Shorter walk, please. <laughs> We're at three already, so... So then, the cars make their way now down through Redgate Corner. Chance to get some warmth into the tyres and umbrellas are going up again and waterproofs are going on and the teams think, oh no. And that is a horrible track surface. Yes, yeah, so you can see there's wet on the track because as they're driving over it, they're moving the wet. These guys are on slicks. It's going to be nearly impossible, I would say. Um, we could be heading for a very traumatic first lap here, but those who have taken the inspired choice to go in the pits, and there goes one of the BMWs, I think that could be... And it was Adam Morgan, Adam Morgan. who has come in, in fact, Adam Morgan then in the pit lane. And basically I was driving around, I was getting no temperature in at all, and in my head I'm thinking, I'm just going to crash. <laughs> I'm just going to crash at turn one, or I'm going to crash at old hairpin, so I'm going to put wets on. I came in, put the wets on, and then prayed for rain. Stop. Hopefully that was the right call. Yeah. It's not often you hope for rain, is it? No. The lights will go out now. We can go racing, but a wheel spin from many of them off the line. But a good getaway by Dan Camish from pole position. Good start also then uh, being made by Tom Ingram, who goes to the outside line. Andrew Watson tries to make the run up on the inside as they dive down towards Redgate for the first time. Yeah, but this is a voyage of trepidation on the first lap as they explore racing speeds on a damp track. And I think it's fur the further they get round the track, I think the damper it is. Hey, firm, mate. Hey, firm. Everybody's in the same boat. Every man and his dogs and slicks. Right, we're ready if required. You're the eyes and ears on the track. But all I can say is if you can get heat into tries, I reckon you'll be all right. Literally every time you hit the brakes, you're just not sure whether you've got the, the braking capability or not. One of the one motorsport cars goes off. Can, can they keep it going? They can. Well done. It is Dan Camish from Tom Ingram. That's the top two then as they make their way up the hill. Third is Andrew Watson. And then behind him is Dan Robot and then Jake Hill, then Josh Cook. And 
fronts. There's sort of, if you like, one wave of cars. Then what we need to see is the likes of Adam Morgan, who is on wax and what progress. And that is Ricky Collard, who's got big damage. He's stranded on the circuit, and I rather fear we're going to have a safety car to get that out of the way. Safety car, safety car, race to the boards, mate. Safety car, safety car, race to the boards. So this, with the safety car out, gives you, in a sense, a free pit stop because you'll lose less time changing onto wets than you would under green flag conditions. Aiden Moffat comes in as well. Yeah, it does, uh, and it also enables the ones that did come in the pits and change tyres the ability to get right onto the back of the crocodile on the wet tyres. So that's they're going to be in the position A once this race restarts. But it's not going to be quick to clear that car. It'll need a lift. Um, oh, he's very upset. Interesting that still quite a few are staying out rather than risking the pit stop and losing places. Adam Morgan is the best place of those on wets now in 14th place. So now Adam Morgan trying to get the tyres up to temperature. This could be an inspired move, couldn't it have been the, the yeah, absolutely. first one to dive in from the grid? Yeah, he's in a really strong position, isn't he? Of course, Adam has now transferred from the Sicily Motorsport team, where he, which was a family-owned business. He was part and parcel of the business. He, you know, helped with every element of it, from loading the cars up to organising paperwork. Now he could just be a driver. But perhaps his experience of running a team gave him the confidence to make that early call to come in for wets. So Adam Morgan is in the pound seat here. He's 13th. Yeah. He is the best of those that are on wets. He is very much in the box seat for a race win here, as long as conditions are on his side. So the safety car peels in uh, to get round two of the British Touring Car Championship back underway. We go racing. Dan Camish accelerates away. Tom Ingram chases after him. Row bottom third. Watson Hill and Cook rounding out the top six. But then the one to watch is going to be number 33, Adam Morgan's Team BMW, entering to see what progress he can make. Those that are on wets then are three wide, going down towards Redgate Corner. They've got the grip. Look, Morgan is catching hand over fist onto the slower slick shot cars. He's taking Nick Hamilton with him and also Tom Chilton and Rona Pearson. But now, look, those that are on slicks, you can see the speed differential as they go downhill. Morgan, man on mission. Oh, I don't like this very much. That's Ash Sutton being chased by Adam Morgan. Sutton's on slicks, Morgan's on wets. One place gain, he's again. About to get a second as they head now in towards Coppice Corner. Through on the inside goes Morgan, goes ahead of Sutton. He is carving through the field. Yeah, well, it's just like candy from a baby, isn't it, for, <laughs> for Adam Morgan? He could just drive anywhere he likes on the track, and the others are literally tippy-toeing round. You know, I knew the position I was in. I knew I was on wet, I was on the right tyre. So I was just head down, go forward. If anyone's coming from behind, they're on wets, so I had to defend from them. Um, they'll be, those that stayed on slicks will be really regretting their yeah. decision not to stop. Look at Morgan, it's so easy for him. Absolutely on rails. Adam Morgan is up into what now? Fourth place? He certainly is. He's absolutely flying. Look, down the side, third. <laughs> And look, oh. whoops, gets sideways. We've got to change for the lead, though, because Ingram has gone ahead of Kamish. It's going to be short-lived, I think, with Morgan hunting them down. He's up to third round the outside. And look, that's Chilton, I think, hustling on as well. And also Ronan Pearson. I think I actually lost a win because I was trying to get past four or five cars on slick tyres who were going so slow that allowed Chilton to come right around the outside of me at the old hairpin. So it is Chilton up front. He leads. Morgan is second. Kamish was third over the line, but he's dropping down the order. Right, 4.9 seconds, Chilton to Morgan. Uh, that gap is not coming down, so it was an inspired choice, yes, for Adam to go on to wet, but actually the BMW is not matching the pace of the Hyundai, getting a replay of Dan Robotson's forward in the middle of all of that, and then behind, off the road, drops, and Watson, that is, who is currently where in the order? Uh, 23rd after that moment. Dan Robottom on the inside of Tom Ingram, that's for position, it is for 11, the Robo goes through, gains ground. So the man that started the day on pole position gets ahead of the reigning champion, who gives him a little bit of a tap in the tail as he comes out of Redgate, but Robo is not to be dislodged, Robottom hangs on to the place. It is going to be a 15th win in his career for Tom Chilton then, who comes across the line to win round two of the championship at Donington. Tom Chilton wins, second is going to be Adam Morgan. He flashes the lights as he comes across the line. Beautiful. Oh. That is a good plan, did it? Jack. So do I that didn't go to plan, did it? We called it a bit too late on the tyres, so it wasn't a great result for us. And then you're in the middle of the pack fighting where you don't really want the car to be especially in this touring car, you don't really don't want the car in the middle of the pack or at the back. It's top 10 or it's sort of weekend over. We all got 
obsessed with our own battles. So I think it was Dan, Camish, and maybe Tom, and, and Jake was there as well. We were racing each other. Meanwhile, the guys behind us were like, it's obviously too wet now. So they came in for, for their wets and we stayed out too long. We came out of coppice and I was we trying to warm my tyres up and um, I saw Bobby Thompson I think, trying to warm his up and he nearly threw it off. I was like, it's wet, you know, and it's not easy to warm these tyres up on a real drive car. It's difficult. And I just thought, do you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to box early, get it done. It is a gamble, but luckily for me, it was one that paid off. It, you could tell in the pits it was just starting to sprinkle. He called it perfectly and, 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 and ended up boxing at the end of the formation lap. That was a really brave decision because I think we were sixth or seventh on the grid. So nobody in front of us boxed because you know, you, the closer you are out of front, the more you have to lose. <laughs> Again, a, a, fantastic, uh, a fantastic call by Adam, really. It's not really what I wanted to do on the grid, but we'll roll with it. I wasn't set out for this. Green flag shows we're ready to go. It is round three of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship from Donington. The lights go out, and who makes the best start? Camish gets away nicely, so definitely does Turkey turn, as you might have anticipated, as he comes through the traffic, then down towards Redgate. It is going to be Camish that leads. Turkington is into second. A good start also by Ingram for third. Robotham is down to fourth. He's got Bobby Thompson alongside him. Slow start by Jack Butel. Drama in the mid pack. Nick Halstead goes around and he goes off and he goes backwards and he goes. Safety car, safety car, race to the ball. Over the timing line they will come. And Dan Camish, race one winner, leads race three. And now everybody starts to weave around, trying to keep up the tar temperature and pressure. And that's the reason that we are under caution. It's because Nick Halstead is one of truly beached down Redgate. Third race of the day for the touring cars back underway. And a big, big spin as around goes Adam Morgan. And he takes Sam Osborne with him. And that's before they've got to the green flag. That does not tend to go down well with race officials. Adam Morgan has not got going. After the green flag lap, we caught the chicane and it just, just completely spanned me out. And uh, then I got collected by Sam Osborne and unfortunately I had to come in the pits and uh, put a new tyre on it. Adam Morgan is in the pits. So his weekend hasn't finished well. And I wonder therefore whether there was some damage sustained yeah. in that drama when, as you were suspected, he was uh, tapped into a spin. Dump it. Three pit stops in a day, what's this? I don't know how to do that. Oh well, we're out again. Oh, there's more contact again as they come out through the old hair pit and more contact. They are absolutely leaning on each other. That's Bobby Thompson and uh, Dan Robottom. Well, that's Tom Thompson, hasn't it? Except he gets into the back of Robottom and McLean absolutely fires him sideways. Robottom oh. is dispatched rather truly into the gravel. Take that, Dan, says Dan Lloyd. Robocop's a big whack and he goes way off the road. He's back on the circuit, but that was a bit brutal. I'm going to say he's off. Robotson will be pretty aggrieved by that, because that's cost him a lot of ground. Yes, I think he will be very unhappy, obviously. Yeah. It's been a pretty disastrous weekend after qualifying on pole. That was the only good bit of the weekend. So Dan Camish leads, and he's on target for the winners. Turkington thinks about the inside line, diving into red gate, but Ingram moves across and defends. Now Sutton tries to work out where he can attack Turkington, and just as Turkington is trying to attack Ingram, and Sutton is trying to attack Turkington, Hill is trying to attack Sutton. The BMW at the back of the group, Sutton dives to the inside of Turkington, and that's a move that's hard, and he's through on the inside line. That was brave, and it was bold, and it was late, but it's worked for him, and here comes Hill. Turkington forced out wide, he's going to lose one place, and possibly two. The forward of that Sutton goes through, and Jake Hill is there as well, but Turkington braves it out round the outside. Fantastic racing, this. Well, Turkington's desperate not to lose two places, but this isn't over yet. It's all going to come down to the chicane. Hill is desperate to go through with Sutton. Here they get two BMWs going to collide. Yes! yes. <laughs> Sutton's through, Hill's through, Turkington gets dumped down two places. Right there 
He's down row bottom ahead of Aaron Taylor Smith, and that's ninth. But Taylor Smith is coming back at him, and he goes through. Aaron Taylor Smith in the Astra, and now also Andrew Watson comes up to have a go as they make the run down towards the chicane. The leader has just started his last lap. So on the inside line, Taylor Smith is going to go ahead of the Ford. Through he goes. Robotham has been up the order and now he's gone down the order again. It's been a really tough day for him. But not for this, Dan. Kamish, who leads by 3.2 seconds with less than a lap to run. Dan Kamish wins round three of the British Touring Car Championship at Donington. Second is going to be Tom Ingram. And then the man scrambled to the line gives Ash Sutton third, just ahead of Jake Hill. Robotham is 10th, 11th for Butcher, 12th for Watson, Gamble 13th. One of them. Well done, mate. Well done. Had a pretty good day as well. You got the podium. Our first weekend together. Yeah. <laughs> and it's up to downs. Yeah. Loads of places in that race. It was okay. It was okay. It's just the way it goes. It's tearing car, would you expect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well done, you. Makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? Jack's is, yeah. Makes it worthwhile. Can I have the hat? Late nights, early mornings. Podium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not much more needed than that, but wow, today was up and down of touring cars. Race, qualifying race one, you know, was brilliant. P4, then we got caught out in the tyres race so pretty much all the way to the back and then that I would describe as my first proper touring car race, you know, we were charging through the pack, um, it was really tight but wow, just <laughs> loved it, feel like a uh, Sunday's gone on for about a week now but yeah, just absolutely over the moon and it's such a great, you know, way to start the year and once you get some good momentum from the start and confidence is up, uh, we're rocking and rolling so yeah, delighted and I'm having a beer tonight. Expectations shifted after the first result, you know, I'm thinking overall podium, but yeah, Jack's here is, is what we came here to achieve, so, you know, I want to win a championship this year and that, that could be one of them. First weekend with West Surrey, to get a podium is, is mega, so I'm really, really happy with that. As a driver, the only thing I'm annoyed about is, is race three, where I threw it off basically by myself. Hit a curb in the wet and the car just span and, and I was out. So on the whole, it was really good. But the, the driver in me is still pissed off that I span in race three. But, you know, for the team, good points. We had relatively good pace and set a good foundation for the start of the season. Brands Hatch was, was quite the, the challenge. My first thought was I'm never going to reach him, I'm never going to get there, or at least I'll hit the gravel. Rejoin, it might get collected if he's not careful. We had just had nothing, we had no grip, no pace. Red flag, red flag. Be good, mate, you good? A bit of, bit of a struggle, being made slightly harder now. Wrong place, wrong time, bang.